Hello and welcome back to our combat scenario tutorial series. In the last episodes, we've worked on our scenario setup and the AI. So the AI will be triggered by a trigger box and activate. Now in this episode, what we're going to do is going to set up the next stage of our combat director. And this managing director is going to look after what enemies are spawned in, what enemies are dying and react accordingly. Now the goal of this is to make it so our combat director or manager is flexible enough to be reused throughout the game. There's no point in making just one thing for one particular type of part of the game. You want to make it work for that whole entire thing. So we're going to set up a system which will allow us to call different events for different reasons at different times. So let's go take a look at how we accomplish something like this. So if you want a reminder, our combat manager is this box that's going around our environment. And currently the only logic that we've got in here is the, when we walk over it, it will trigger and activate the enemies. Okay, so anything that's set in there will begin and start doing their stuff. But there's going to be scenarios where we actually want to keep track of what enemies are dying, what situations are happening at any one point, and make them triggerable for different events. So let's go ahead and set that up. So the first thing we need to do is track which enemies are dying when we get kill them. So in order for us to do that, our enemies, first of all, need to be bound to our combat director. So the combat director is looking at enemies and deciding what's going to happen to them. So for that to work, our NPCs need to have the ability to shout out when they've been killed. Not when they're destroyed, because we probably still want the corpses to lay on the floor. But let's make it so that they shout out when they die at least. So let's go find my NPC. And we're going to do a simple health damage system on here. So let's do damage and use the event any damage. And we're going to take... From here, a health value. So health will set to, I don't know, start three. And we'll set that back to health. Okay. So when we hit him with one of our balls, they'll get take one away, hit him three times, they'll be dead. So for him to be counted as dead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check to see if the health value is less than or equal to zero and put that into a branch and if it's true i want to call an event now event is going to be on character actually we'll just do character death we won't do on character death we'll just do character death and we'll just call that up here on true so if it's if we lose all our health this will fire off and this will do various things, like, like enable ragdoll, disappear, spawn loot, all those sort of things. But most importantly, for it to work with our combat director, we need an event dispatcher. And this event dispatcher, we're going to call on character death. Drag this out and call it. And just so we can easily see what's going on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the visibility, or set the actor hidden in game, to true. So at least they look like they've gone. Yeah. And we'll set the capsule here to overlap. So set enable collision to no collision. Okay. So they won't disappear. They'll just, well, sorry, they'll disappear, but they won't be destroyed. Okay. So now we actually have to deal damage to them. So let's go ahead and go to our ball in our first person uh, template and when I hit it we're going to destroy uh, the ball but we also want to apply damage to whatever we're hitting with it so we're going to do apply damage and I want this to actually be on both true and false because the true part here this is we hit a physics object and now the characters aren't physics objects but it might be a good idea to have them both connected to being applying the damage and we need other for the damage actor, because that refers to what we're hitting with it. And then the base damage here we'll just do as one. And then damage causer will do um, 
in this case, to get player character. Okay, and that's all we really need to do. So now when I go pick up my gun, I'm going to shoot it. Uh, ah, so the problem we have here is our combat director is interfering with the projectile, which is not good. So we need to go and edit our combat director to not block the projectile. So go click on your box in your combat director, go down to its collision settings, and you will see in there, yep, projectile has been set to block. So I'm going to change that to custom and take it to overlap the projectile. Okay, so now, there we go. So I should be able to hit him. So if I'm not hitting him, that's probably because he needs to block the projectile as well. So let's go to AI, NPC, capsule collision, go down to its collision settings. Okay, so it's set to block projectile and it's a pawn. Now, the important thing to know about collision is that both this and the, the, hit, the thing that's hitting it and the thing that's been hit need to have matching collision profiles. So both have to be set to block. So I'm going to guess the projectile is actually set to ignore pawns. So, so if we go to collision component, custom, yeah, it's been told to ignore pawns. And the problem we have here is that if I assign that to block the pawns, it's probably going to hit, hit me as well, which I don't want to happen. So what I'm going to do is leave that alone. And I'm just going to change the enemy to be a world dynamic object instead. So let's go back to our NPC and the capsule here. Custom, change the object type here to world dynamic. And now that should bounce off of them. Well, not bounce off of them, but hit them. Okay. Now, <clears throat> at the moment, it's going straight away, and that's probably because this is accidentally getting hit applied multiple times. What I need to do is put this destroy actor actually here. So both the physics and non-physics are going to destroy the ball. Let's go back into here. I should see that I have to hit him three times. There we go. Okay. So our enemies can die. But when they're dying, they're shouting out that they're dead. So we need to tell our combat director to listen for that. So let's go over to our combat director. And at the moment, we've got these overlapping actors on begin play. So this is fetching all the enemies that we've got in our scene here. Now the problem we have here is that this array is just an array of actor objects. So we need to, when we go through this, bind it. But we can't bind it unless we cast first. So let's make a binding for all these things here. So we're going to do a for each loop. Bind event, uh, sorry, cast to, well, cast to NPC. And then bind to on character death. I'm going to take the event pin and do create event and we can now choose from a drop down. We can create a matching event and say on enemy death. So when an enemy dies, this function will get called out. And it's always good to test things out, make sure the logic works. So what we're going to do is we're going to do just a print string on here saying dead, compile, and now play it. And what we should see here is the combat director is going to shout out the word dead. get far enough from him there you go dead in the top corner there so that's working the combat director now knows when an enemy dies and why is that important well the, com the point of combat director is to manage the combat so it has to indicate when the combat started and when the combat's ended so when the enemy is dead we need to actually remove the enemy from our enemy actors list here so we can use this as a managing list to determine which enemies are part of the combat scenario and who aren't now, for this, we need to be able to remove a particular index from here. Now, we can't do that because we don't have a reference to the enemy that died. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and edit our event dispatcher to include that reference. So let's go back to our NPC, go to character death, 
and over here we'll see inputs and over here we're just going to put in npc i'm going to choose the bp npc object type and now you can see the call on character def has the npc pin if it doesn't say it just right click on it and refresh it and it should uh, should now say so the npc here it's just going to be self and if we go back to combat director this will now give you an error and that's because what we have here is a signature mismatch so signatures refer to the parameters that are coming in and out of a function so in this case the event dispatcher has a signature of including an npc pin a combat director has been bound to an event which does not have an npc pin so to fix that you can just add an npc pin to it Now, if I hit compile, it'll be fine. Okay, so now we've got to remove our enemy actors from the list here. Now, the best way of doing this is not to do remove item. Remove item is uh, a little bit tricksy. What it basically will do, we'll, we'll remove every copy of that NPC from that list. Which, granted, in this example, isn't going to be too much of a problem because this is going to be a unique reference. So, it's not going to have like multiples in here. But if you do have multiples in here, you can use a find instead to find the index of that NPC and then remove that index. But I said you can do it either way in this case, because it's a blue pin, we can put it like that. Or you can do find item and then do remove index. In this case, not much difference, okay? But be aware if you are using something more generic in terms of a, uh, a, a variable, then that may be a problem. So be careful with that. So I'm going to just play it safe and leave remove index as my solution for this. It's a little bit safer way of doing it. Okay, so that's going to remove that index from the enemy actors. Now, every time this happens, I need to check to see if enemy actors is empty. So we're going to take the enemy actors array, who is empty. that in and then if it's true we're going to call an event which is going to say that the combat is finished so let's do another event or um we'll do combat scenario finished i'm going to call that over here on true And again, we're going to test things out by doing a little print string to say combat has ended. Compile this. And let's set that up with combat has ended. So the combat scenario now knows that something has ended. And then that, for that to be useful, we need it to actually use an event dispatcher. That way we can bind it to all sorts of things in a level blueprint when building our environments. So let's go ahead and create an event dispatcher for our combat scenario. So on combat scenario finished. Call this and use that instead. Okay. So there's a lot more we're going to do to this later on. We're not going to do it right now, but later on we're going to add more functionality to it. So what we're going to do is focus on the basics. So at the moment, the combat scenario is ended. So how do you actually use this? Well, in your level, this is where the level blueprint comes in. Because this will be a unique thing to this level. So we go to our level blueprint. And with the combat scenario you want selected, right click, add event for BP combat. And in default, you'll see add on combat scenario finished. And this is the function that's going to happen for this combat scenario. It'll reference it directly. So now I can call other things to happen here. So spawn enemies, queue cutscene, open door, whatever I want to do. Let's make it so a door opens. So I'm going to do a very simple thing here. And we're going to make this quote unquote door uh, disappear. So that is selected there. So now if I go back to my level blueprint, 
we're going to create a reference to our quote unquote door and we'll do destroy actor obviously we'll be changing this later for an actual door that animates but for now we just want to see that reaction happen in real time so that door is still there and now the enemy is dead that's triggered the end of the scenario and open that door up allowing more enemies to spawn in or uh, to allow the player out whatever it may be so that is how we're going to set up the basics of our combat scenario but make sure you tune in for the next episode we'll do a lot more with this and make it more far more flexible so there you go we've made a combat scenario work with a simple event dispatches and we can now determine when an event has finished but this is just the beginning as we want to make it so the event is far more flexible allowing the player to trigger different spawners to happen add those spawners back to the combat direction and also add more events to it as well rather than just waiting for all the enemies to die we can maybe trigger it a bit early maybe and say like when there's only one enemy left spawn something else or do something else and that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where you can find all my videos early from just one dollar a month a massive thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for the continued support in the channel Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.